Every marriage is unique and every relationship is absolutely personal. So, Curtis, how are you doing? I'm doing good, how are you? Very well. <laughs> Sorry, like, you seem to be very happy. Is it Curtis or is it me? Is it the show? <laughs> I am happy, yes. You're happy? Yes. Well, you guys, talk to us about how you got to meet, how long ago that was. Um, mm -hmm. If we would start from there. Uh, ladies. Ladies first. Mm -hmm. Uh, men before. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we met in Daystar University. Alright. I was in my first year. I was about to finish my first, I think my second semester or the third semester of my first year. And how we met is interesting because I was invited, they were doing a certain project in school. It was a video shoot, a movie. So I was invited to be an extra. It was a wedding shoot, so I was there. And then he was one of the groomsmen there marching down the aisle with a beautiful girl and I think they took so many takes because <laughs> these guys are not being romantic. <laughs> what began as a class project in his fourth year turned out to be the first meeting that Curtis would have with his future wife Soila. He did not know that the girl who came in to be cast as an extra was going to be part of his life. And I just saw him and I thought ah this is an interesting guy and that was it. After that I never saw him again. I went back to school and that was it. From there, the next time I saw him was during a concert. We had some international Kinala Cray. They came to Kenya for some concert. And at Daystar, we went together. I went with my friend and we were right at the front where the stage was. Then what happened, she went to the VIP area. Then I was left there alone. Then when people were dancing, I was being moved and displaced out of where I was by KU students. I'm not saying KU students are rowdy, but they just <laughs> <laughs> displaced me. And Curtis and his friends were behind. I think they saw that I was alone and they, he decided to come and say, you just young woman, come here. I think they moved to where I was and then took me to where they were standing. Yeah. That's how we met. Uh, <laughs> That's she, my version. She's, she, she's given you a true account, but it's the edited version. <laughs> <laughs> so the accurate version <laughs> that when you were shooting the movie, she was jealous. She wanted to be the girl. <laughs> it's a lie. I knew you. <laughs> So she was annoyed because she felt this girl was not doing this role really well and she would have stepped in. Of course, she never mentioned that. I, I, I came and learned that back later. Who told yeah, you? So you forgot it, but you said it. So. Yeah. I didn't talk to him. We only came to talk to each other at the concert. All right. And it's him after he called me aside. He asked me after the concert was over, do you want water? And I'm like, no, do you want food? No. And I'm so hungry, but I can't ask. So why were you saying no? I can't be bought food, but <laughs> I'm like, I didn't want him to see. I'm very, I want things from him. You know, I just didn't want to. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> but I was terrible hunger. So when he bought his water, I think I took it from him. Like, just let me take a sip from, you know, from your body. But I didn't want to ask anything from him. And then from there, we started conversing. Thing. I went home, we started chatting, text messages, we went back to school mm -hmm. and then from there I think for him now he decided, ah, after how long did you make me food? After, it was about a month because I was exiting day start. Yeah. Right. yeah it was my when she was in her first year, yes. you were in your fourth. Yeah, it was my okay. fourth. Okay. So actually when I was in my final sem, she was in her second sem. All right. So I was like, hey, if I don't make an impression right now, <laughs> I leave. <No>, so <laughs> I, know, I know a lot of opportunities in this, and I this opportunity. So after the concert I organized for her, uh, she came to my hostel. I really made dinner. That day I went out, did recipes and all that. So I asked her what her favorite meal is. And before you, before you, before you, do you still do that? Yeah, Up until I, now? Yeah, he still. does. Okay. Yeah, but he no longer okay, asks yeah. us if we write color, you know, like you now know. Yeah. Oh my goodness. But colors change for women every month. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. All right, okay. So you did the dinner for her, then you asked her out? I did the dinner for her. I didn't ask her out right yet. Eh? I just come from a previous relationship which didn't end up so well. So I wasn't really sure if I wanted to get into another room. Yeah. I was afraid she might be a rebound. And, and so you were also, you're mm. caught in between. Yes. You're afraid to lose out on this. Yes. Yeah. But you're also... also yeah, yeah. So I was playing around with that uh, idea for around three months until one day she sent me a message late in the night. She was like, uh, if you find somebody... Oh, no! <laughs> if you find somebody and uh, you want to get 
just go ahead, I suppose. It's a lie. <laughs> but just let me know so that I don't ring around. <laughs> It was her own telling me, dude, you better make up your mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I told her, don't worry, I'm not looking for anyone anytime soon. And I think about two weeks later, <laughs> I decided to ask her the question. Oh my goodness. Yeah. He actually, how you ask the question, he came to school, he had already left. Yeah. So he was in the computer lab working my assignment, somebody just turns from the back and like, Wah! and I'm like, who are you? <laughs> He's like, ah, okay, so we walked. Uh, across the campus and he was like um, now I don't know we have been like good friends I think it's now official let's just make it official will you be my girlfriend I don't remember if he asked like that did you ask it like that or we just we just became I just remember I had chocolate I know yeah, yeah. and that was you know, like, it's okay it's official that's it <laughs> yeah. yeah and so the journey began how long ago is that now I know you've been married for two years yeah but how long did you date ah that was way back in 2012 2012. Yeah, so we dated for four years. 2011, 2012. Okay. Yeah. The people who think that if you date for long, mm -hmm. um, it affects your marriage later. Mm. Is that, has that been the case for you? Uh, not quite. Because eh? I think dating is dating and marriage is marriage. Yeah. Yeah, you can date for 10 years. Yeah, because that get married is a totally different thing. Yeah, yeah because yeah. The, the argument is, you mm. know, when you take so long, you mm. become familiar, you lose the spice out of it. Uh, They're those who feel mm -hmm. when you date for long, you lay a very solid foundation. Yeah, yeah. For us, it worked well. Uh, we were very mature when we started dating. So we needed the four years. Okay. Yeah, so for us, it, it served. Well. How did you deal with the mm. long distance? Yeah. It was it wasn't hard because I'm like it's good for me I'm like it's good you be away I'm in school let me concentrate on my studies <laughs> and then we meet over the weekend and we go to church because we used to go to the same church so we meet over the weekend go to the same church and then after that I have to go back to school so for me it was easy and then after school came him he said hustling trying to find his footing in the career industry and I am here as well trying to get internship and all that and then also again trying now to establish the relationship. For marriage, <clears throat> I think it was an interesting. I didn't. I appreciated that time away from okay. him. Yeah. All right. One of the things that Kat has had to deal with is the fact that everybody, including Soiler, would expect that he, as a man, would be the breadwinner. Well, people say the times have changed, but there are certain things that still hold true even now. Ah, it was. I'm, I'm just glad she was really gracious. Eh? Okay. She was really patient with me. All right. I tried so many things. I tried farming. I tried doing IT. I tried selling insurance. I did so many things. So by the time I was actually saying that now art is my thing, it has been quite a lengthy process. I think process is a better word than hard. Okay. I was in a going through process, and by the time I was now realizing that this is what I want to do, I started as an art teacher. All right. Yeah. So I decided to go to to do art and design teaching in one of the Cambridge British System schools, okay. which really helped me because the main thing I do is art is mentorship. All right. So that's when I actually started earning a proper salary. Okay. Yeah. So before that, I would just sell portraits and paintings. Sometimes I would have really good months, sometimes I would have really terrible months. And I think that separation, you see now what I was saying, I was in school and he was trying to, the process, mm -hmm. I, he didn't have to spend so much money on yeah. me. You know, it was all over the weekend. Sunday after church, go buy me lunch. But I remember most of our dates were at the bomb last place. We just go to the uchumi that was there, buy a sandwich, come and sit there with yogurt, and enjoy ourselves. We actually didn't do a lot of hotels. Did you ever have this kind of pressure sometimes people have of, uh, so you said, this is the man that I'm going out with, and then they ask, what does he do? Mm. I had that pressure from my mom. Okay. She was like, oh, so you're yeah. serious, okay. You know, ladies nowadays, <laughs> you have to show some sort of seriousness. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'm serious, but you've been in the house for two years. Get a job. I'm like, no, my art will pay. It's not been paying for two years. <laughs> so yeah. it, was, uh, it was a long process. By the time it started paying, I'd, I'd gone through all those sort of questions. Yeah. Okay. I think for him, I covered him a lot with my parents. I'm like, yeah, he's doing a great job. He's an artist. He does portraits. He sells his good work. I mean, he's, he's stable. He's doing amazing. And they're like, oh, okay. Sawa, sawa. Because them, them, they're not in Nairobi. They're in yeah, Narok. So, so I'm like, they don't ah, get to see. Yeah. I'm like, I've done my work on the other side. That's okay. Did you ever ask yourself the same question? Like, will this thing work out for him? Yes, I have. Especially when he was moving from one thing to the other, to yes, the other. Yes. So 
how did you hold yourself through it? I think through prayer. <laughs> I was like, God, if this doesn't work, I think I'll be the provider for my family. <laughs> but anyway, I think I also prayed. I supported him in prayer and just telling him, when you're selling insurance, you sell it as though it's the last thing you're selling, you know. I think for me, yes, I was a bit jittery about what he was doing. But with Curtis, there's that drive he has when he says okay. he has decided to do something. I'm like, ah, this is going to work, even if it won't work at the end. But the way he carries things or goes for stuff, I'm like, hmm. So yeah. that's, that's, that's important, right? Um, if you were to meet a young couple uh, that were at the same place and some, somebody wants to know, because I hear that question a lot yeah. when, when I met my wife and we, we dated for slightly over four years, nearly mm -hmm. five years, you know, and the question used to be, what does it do? Mm -hmm. um, and I was setting out in ministry, mm -hmm. uh, which yeah. like us, yeah. you know, wasn't going to pay. And so the question would always be, so how is he going to take care of the family? Is he being paid by a church and stuff mm -hmm. like that? Um, how would you, what would you say to a lady mm -hmm. who is meeting this man who is just starting off? Yeah. Somehow she believes he's a good man. Like you say, he's got yeah, a drive. Yeah. Then on the other hand, the reality <laughs> is something else. <laughs> because I, I feel like there's a, there are a lot of ladies who yeah. give up on relationships at that particular point because the man does not look like what they're expecting. What did you say there? I think w the main thing that I'd say definitely is patience. It doesn't, it, it would be unfair for you to expect him to have, to be this billionaire man. He's just right from the university, two years into it, and you want him to be making this certain amount of money. It's okay, you can easily go outside there and get somebody who's already established. That's something else. But if this is a relationship you're willing to invest in, then there's that period of waiting and patience and also investing in him himself. Is it words of affirmation? Is it kidogo capital here and there to, to ensure that he's... And I think for a lady, if you see there's drive in a man, then that's something else. But if you see there's nothing, he's just there, he's not even pulling his sword, he's just there. And I'm like, you also get discouraged and you become unsure of your future. And then you might now start questioning. But it's good to sit down, instead of just throwing in the towel, sit down and have that conversation with your man. So what's the plan for the future? What are you going to do for the mm -hmm. next month? You know, and not pressuring them. Because they also know they need to provide. They are in that space. They know that, yes. Sit down, have that conversation, understand where they are, what is their plan, how you as a woman you are going to supply into that plan. So that you just grow together. Talk to me about, you know, the pressure from a man's point of view. Uh, because later on um, we'll be talking something about with men. But talk to me about that pressure that men feel internally sometimes. And so they need the support system yeah. of the woman in their life. Yeah. Wow, the support system of the woman goes a long way. It's, uh, to some extent, I think it even goes a long way than the parental support. Okay. Because there's one time I asked her a question. I was like, wow, so uh, if, if, if this is the situation, even as when you get married, what do you think things are going to be? And she told me, I don't know if she said this just to make me feel nice or she meant it, but she said, you know what, even if we live in a manyata, <laughs> as long as I'm with you, that's all that counts. And it really, of course, I'm not really planning to live in a manyata, <laughs> but the thought that she's willing to stay, even in the thick of things, made me want to make it work. Right. So that support was really a big drive for me. Okay. I think it was the biggest drive in terms of all the other people around me. Were there days that you felt mm -hmm. just by yourself? Mm -hmm. You felt like, you know what, I just need to let Sorile go. Um, yeah. As in, I don't want to fail her. Yeah. Uh, I love her, things are not working for me. Yeah. I think I just need to yeah. let her go so that I save yeah. her this, all, all this yeah. chaos. Yeah. Yeah. The thought crossed my mind, eh? Quite, wow. quite. <laughs> <laughs> It's a thought. <laughs> oh, I thought it was an idea that it's a reality. <laughs> the thought crossed my mind a couple of times, but I really never got to the point of actually now seeing how I could make it happen. Okay. Yeah. So it definitely crossed my mind, but I always had that thing of, I think I, was, I maintained a positive outlook of how things would turn out. Right. Yeah, so I think that helped. It's interesting how different people from different backgrounds have their own various expectations. Well, Soila had her own, you know, and she tells us that she had a culture shock. My personality, I'm a sanguine, melancholic, so I tend to have my things well organized. We've never lived together when we were dating. So, <laughs> I have a man in the house. Him, he removes his socks, leaves it there. 
or the text juice, leave the cup on the table, or the glass there. And I'm He's like, an artist. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I don't like that. I'm like, I'm an artist. No, artist. The cup will always find itself in the sink. It doesn't have to be now. And I'm like, but there are flies everywhere. There are doodles that can come there. You just need to take your cup. But no, I think that for me was a culture shock. Mm -hmm. And then how I was brought up in my home. We are four siblings. He's the only child. In my place, would today it's my turn. I'll wash dishes and I'll make dinner. I got married. You know, I was expecting that. And I'm like, I'll wash dishes. You cook tomorrow. <laughs> This day, I think he, he tells that story so well. So, <laughs> but there, was a, there was a time, it was just, uh, you know, during the first week, think the excitement of marriage. She was cooking every day, breakfast, nini. So, me, I knew, ah, this is the culture. So, we move into the next week, and we are there watching TV. It's around 8, 9 p.m. And I'm like, where, where is dinner? <laughs> So I'm like, Fella, what's the plan? And she looks at me and she's like, oh, what do you think? <laughs> I cooked yesterday. You figured out what you're eating today. <laughs> I'm like, but that's not what we discussed. It's become an issue. So eventually, it all boiled down to the issue of communication. Because right. I've never really had an issue in cooking. I cook a lot of times. Okay. So my issue was, this is what she was expecting and she's not communicating. And I was just about yeah. to bring out that word, because mm. expectations, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, how do you manage? Mm. How do you manage expectations? Mm. Or rather, if you were to say that to somebody else who's getting into a marriage setup, mm. how do you manage expectations? Because you see, you had your own yes. based on your background. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's thinking based on the first week, this is, this is the life. You yes. know? Yeah. I think with expectation, definitely. You're a man, you're a woman, totally from different backgrounds. There's going to be misunderstandings in all the ways. But one statement that we normally say is your commitment to adjusting. Okay. You mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. how he works, understand how I work, how are you going to be in the middle ground? Mm -hmm. How do we make this thing work? Because mm -hmm. if you don't arrange your clothes, I can as well leave the house be upside down. But mm -hmm. if somebody walks into our house, they'll mm -hmm. be like, it's, they won't talk about him, they'll talk about the woman who's responsible in that house. So I just need you, there's a way, and then how I communicate it to him. Uh, like, honey, it will mm -hmm. be good, or I'll appreciate it, if when you remove your charger, you just put it in the laundry basket. It's easier for me. You make it easier for me to clean the house. But if you just leave it there, I am a bit, it takes me a lot of energy <laughs> to do the work. So how you communicate it is also very important. I mm -hmm. think when it comes to managing uh, expectations and just to you adjusting to each other, it doesn't take the first year of marriage. Mm -hmm. We are still even right now adjusting so many things. Mm -hmm. I keep on learning about different things about him, even right now. And I'm like, wow, this is something different. How do I adjust myself? Because I'm not going to chase him out of the house. <laughs> it's just how <laughs> are we going to make it work? And right. I am not working into changing him. I like how he is as a person, as an artist. I'll cut it. I can't make him be like me, you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's just committing to adjusting yeah. to some of those things. Yeah. What was your most <laughs> difficult uh, adjustment, Curtis? Uh, my most difficult That's adjustment cool. was, I think, financially. Okay. Yes. Uh, so Ila has a certain of how she spent money. <laughs> and uh, for me, it was a culture shock. <laughs> it was a culture shock. And I used to have, a, I developed a wrong perception about her. Because okay. I used to think she's not responsible, blah, blah, blah. But as time went by, I realized it's not that she's irresponsible. It's just that she is her own person. Because, you know, me being an artist, most of my spending goes on art stuff. Right. So when I see her buying stuff that are not art stuff, I feel like she's wasting that money. That money could have been used for something more important. So that was a big uh, deal for me. But with time, I began to understand who she is. Just the way I have a personality, which will right. influence how I spend a lot on okay. whatever I'm spending on. It's the same thing with her. All right. So I brought myself to the place of understanding who she is, what her interests are, what does it mean she spends on certain things. You've talked about finances mm -hmm. and you, you've also mentioned communication and, yeah. and one of the biggest, actually those two mm -hmm. are nearly like the biggest issues yeah. in, in marriage. marriage, you know, communication and then finances. Yeah. So how do you go about that? How do you make decisions? You've understood her personality, mm -hmm. you understand you mm -hmm. and she understands you. Yeah. How do you go about that? Um, money decisions, yeah. who makes the decisions, mm -hmm. regardless of who makes the money, how do you go about that? Wow, interesting. I think in the initial stages of our marriage, definitely I'd shout at the top of my voice when I'm pissed off. <laughs> and then I learned that doesn't work with Curtis. When you shout, he shuts down. I'm like, okay. He's, he's, and with most men, yeah. it doesn't work. <laughs> he just shuts down. I'm like, okay, so if I want him to listen to me, there's a way I have to communicate to him. So is it my tone? Is it 
the moment that I'm picking to talk, is it when he's happy, when he's hungry, what time am I choosing to cause he's the worst person is hungry? <laughs> Oh my God, you can't even pass anything to him when he's hungry. So also finding that time, I think I also, I learned to get his perfect moments when I want to communicate something very important. Is it finances? Is it uh, probably a misunderstanding that we had? A fight that we want to resolve now? Because um, I'm not a person, when, when we fight right now, I don't want to finish right now. I'm like, let me just handle, uh, deal with my emotions. Okay. We can talk about it later, exactly. not right. now. It reminds you of what? We, we started a fight last night in <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, in wrapping up, in wrapping up, two things. Um, I was told by my producer, mm -hmm. you love to be referred to as the fours. What's the significance oh. of that? <laughs> ah, okay. Ah, the fours. Well, uh, it's it's a vision thing. Eh? Yeah. Uh, when we started dating, we just decided to incorporate that thing, and it was more artistic related. Right. But we later on came to realize that it spreads across to every other area of our lives, and it's basically that. Our vision as a couple, whatever we are going to do together, be it career, business, whatever, we just want to make it impactful enough that it will affect the fourth generation after us. All right. So for us, it's from that philosophy. Okay. Yeah. We're affecting the fourth generation. Yes. yes. Up to the fourth generation. All right. Your advice mm -hmm. to people who just newly married. Enjoy. All right. Be be willing to make mistakes. You know, don't kill yourself if you make a mistake. Just go ahead, learn from your mistakes. It's not bad to make mistakes. Just enjoy the journey of growing into each other, understanding each other, knowing each other, and creating a culture of your own in your marriage. Because my culture will not work in your culture. That mm. thing of people copying each other, this works for these guys. Mm. We also have to try. Mm. No, 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 no. Yeah. Try to create your own culture yeah. in your own marriage. All right. So, from the Curtis family, then I would tell you, all they have said, wrapped up in one word, is just be open-minded. When you're getting into marriage, be open-minded. You're coming from two different backgrounds, two different personalities, two different viewpoints, perspectives, two different worlds. Just be open-minded and you make it work. Probably, you never know, you'll have such fun marriages they're having over here. Well, everybody's got to work their own. See you shortly after the break on Talk to Pastor Chris. And you don't want to miss today. You don't want to miss the discussion. Join us on Twitter and on every social media platform at KTN Life underscore style for Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, KTN Life and Style. See you shortly.